Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. This tutorial is all about getting started utilizing two-factor authentication with Django. So here in this tutorial we're going to download and install the Django two-factor authentication application and then go through the process of integrating it within an existing project. So this is the package that we're going to run Django two-factor authentication so have a look at the instructions if you want to go through that and have a look at some advanced options. We're just going to be setting up uh, the two-factor authentication here. So this is the example that they provide us or the demo account. So I've signed up. So the case of this is what we're going to set up. We're going to have the login. We're going to integrate this within our own login system. And then once you've logged in, you'll then be able to set up the authentication. So we're set up the area where users can enable two-factor authentication within our project. And then we go ahead and we only have token generator activated here. So that's where we have this classic example where we'll be generating a QR code like this. We then grab our uh, Google Authenticator tool. So this works with the Google Authenticator a mobile phone application. We need to scan this QR code. You might already be familiar with this type of process. And then we need to enter the code to enable two-factor authentication within for our for our account and then once we've done that we can then go ahead and then when we log in again so i may as well show you so let's go ahead so i've scanned this on my google authenticator app 496 uh, we're going to press next so now that's added i go back to the profile i'm going to log out and i'm going to log in again and this time i'll be presented with my two-factor there we go. So now I need to enter the token from my Google Authenticator. So um, 547693 and then press next. And there we go. We've logged in again. So that's the process that we're going to go through utilizing this um, package. We're going to install it now and integrate it within our own application. So you're going to find the code if you want to follow this as we've completed it in the tutorial here. You're going to find the code in the description so you can go ahead and download um, that uh, start up the application uh, you'll need to pip install the requirements and then you'll be presented with this page or this um, project that's kind of half built so this project here if you want to access the admin area um, you can do um, and the username is a at a.com so i'll quickly show you uh, a a.com and the password is going to be admin so that's the project files that you're utilizing um, let's just uh, log out so you can see that to log in I simply needed my username and password so let's go ahead now and go into the project documentation or the project and let's start actually installing so the first thing we need to do is actually install the Django uh, two-factor authentication so let's uh, open up the instructions now it's worth noting at this point the tool that we're actually using and focusing here is from the django otp application so we could have just installed this instead um, but this is a little bit outdated now and uh, in some respects this uh, django two-factor authentication has has moved this forward slightly um, in that it's integrated some more features on top of this package here on the django otp package so maybe in the future, I'll provide an example here, which is going to be more lightweight if you just wanted to use the two-factor authentication only. So like I was suggesting, this two-factor authentication package here, this works on top of the OTP package and it adds some more features, which, which we're not going to feature in this tutorial. We're just going to focus on building that uh, facility, that um, two-factor authentication that I showed you earlier in the preview. So that's enough flicking in between things. So let's go down uh, to the instructions. Let's crack this open. So you can see that first of all, what we need to do is uh, pip install. So let's just go ahead, I'm going to close the server and then oh, I'm not going to do that. So we need to pip install. So pip install January two factor authentication. There we go. So there's a few things that get that is installed. There's a list here of some items that will be installed. Uh, one of them, no light likely to be what I've just mentioned. Um, so that Django OTP. So it's installed a few packages there. Now there's another package that it's required that's required here. So for example, if I were to try to start this up, 
So let's just follow this. So we need to also add this to the installed apps. Let's just do this first. So there's a number of things here that's um, by default um, required. So in this um, package here that we're working with, you'll see that we have a core application. Inside of there is my settings. Now your application that you're integrated in, you may not have this kind of setup here. I've put all the settings inside of this folder here. So if you're working with this package, um, this code base here, you'll find that you need to go into settings and then the base. So this file here is the equivalent to your settings.py file. Okay, so at the bottom then, we'll add this uh, piece of code. Oh no, sorry, what am I doing? Uh, we need to go into the uh, installed, let's get drop this down. We need to go into the installed applications. So this is a uh, two-factor authentication, 2FA. So these are all the apps that or so packages that we need to install. Uh, so let's go back to the instructions. You notice it also has a middleware. So this needs to be below the author authentication middleware. So let's um, set that up. So this is going to be for the um, the tool that we are using. Uh, so let's just go back into the code. So it needs to be underneath the authentication middleware. There we go. So that's the OTP. So this again is from this Django OTP um, package. So what we'll do first is we'll, we'll just get it integrated as in we can use it. And then we go ahead and think about some a few kind of integrations, um, mostly kind of front end um, trivial, I say trivial, uh, not trivial, front end uh, kind of UI uh, changes that we want to make. So here it says that we need to point the login now to the two factor login. So let's first of all just start this project project up before we do that. So let's run the server. So you can see that it's asking for module phone numbers. So it just happens that um, there looks like to be a custom phone number field. And that's a good um, introduction or that's a good idea for a tutorial later on. Uh, so let's go ahead and just uh, pip install this. So what's happening here, they're obviously using some sort of uh, custom model field that requires um, a phone number. So this is something that we can build a, a custom um, model field, maybe in a, like I said, in another tutorial. So let's go ahead and pip install that. And then we can go ahead once that's done. I don't know why it's taking so long. Uh, so let's just go ahead and just run the server just to make sure it runs. So it runs okay. So let's just remind ourselves of what we had before. So this was the login before. So what we need to do now is go into our settings again and add the login URL. So let's go ahead and do that. So that was in my base. So at the bottom here, I already have a, um, a login URL. So this is the URL pointing to the actual login page um, for my site. So I'm just going to um, comment that out, add the new one in for now. So you can see that's pointing to two-factor login. So this is a, a reference point. Uh, to an app, say, in my application, two-factor, and then go in and have a look for the login URL. So what I need to do now then is set up the URLs so that we can point towards that. So here, what I'm going to do again in my core, um, you can see that I've got my uh, URLs here. So in your core package, your Django kind of core package, go to the URLs. And now we need to integrate our the URLs as specified. So we're going to bring in all the two-factor URLs first. So let's uh, do that first. And there we go. So that makes all the URLs now available here. So I can add them into my URL patterns. And now I can just go ahead and add them into the path. And then we can see all the, then we can go and see all the new paths that are created. Now, just for now, I'm going to put this and just make sure it's above account because the two-factor URLs um, it does extend from account. So that's something to be uh, careful about. Uh, so I'm going to put that above the account at the moment. So let's do that and let's uh, let's run the server and see what happens. So let's just put in a random thing here. Okay, that's not going to work. There we go. So you can see here that um, what what is being provided 
by the Django two-factor package, you can see all the URLs that have been provided. And they extend from the account uh, account slash, so two-factor setup, QR code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you're wondering what we just did, then um, the actual application, this package, sorry, comes with some pre-made URLs, and we've just basically imported them into the URL page or our URL uh, code. And then we've added them to the path. And this then generates multiple paths. This is basically just an include, like we, we do with the other packages. So this is just a package, and we're just including those URLs um, that have been pre-made by in this package here. So you can see now that all these URLs are now available. And then one of them being the account slash login. So what you'll find now we've made those changes. If we go to the account and login, we now have the new login. Um, we have now have the new sign in. You can see that it has the back and the next. So let's just double check to make sure we can still log in. Uh, you can see that it says no such table, OTP static static device. So what's happened here is that because we've added some new applications uh, in the settings and base at the top here, we added some. What we forgot to do was we need to now migrate because what's going to happen is that this application is going to build some tables that we're going to need to actually run this package. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. So obviously that's going to be a, a, a migrate. There we go. So you can see there's a number of tables that are being created for this and we'll go into those shortly. Uh, but let's just go back into our run server and let's just uh, see if we can log in. There we go. So we can still log in. We're just using a template from this package, but you can still see that you can still see that we can log in. Right. So now we've got that. Let's just go into the the admin here. Um, you can see that there's a number of new tables that are being created. Uh, so the Django two-factor authentication table, um, the OT, OTP static table, and the OTP TOPT TOTP table. So the really the only one that's of any interest here is the TOTP devices to begin with, because uh, let's have a look at the fields um, that we have here. So you can see that we've got username and name. So basically, when we set up in a minute our two-factor authentication, we're going to need a username and we're going to need a name of the device. So users could have multiple devices um, that we can set to multiple keys to allow them act to access their account. But how this application is set up by default is it automatically puts the name of, I think, default here, and it then only allows the user to have one device connected to a key, which then obviously then is connected to your Google authentication app on your mobile phone. So you can see that there's some other parameters here. We've got key step, two digits, tolerance. So these are all parameters. If we were to set up our own two-factor authentication and wanted to work with, for example, the Google Authenticator, we would need to understand these in a little bit more detail and to apply them. And in to kind of summarize what's happening here is that these are the tools that allows us and Drift, for example, because our mobile phone, remember, how this is working is it's utilizing the time. So if the time isn't, if the time changes somehow, um, then your application or your two-factor authentication app potentially is out of sync to what was originally synced when you created the actual code. So this does rely very much on time to actually generate codes, etc. Because on your mobile phone application, the code is going to change every, say, 30 seconds. And that can be, you can see we've got a step here. Um, that can, you can change that. So for example, the, the number, the unique number will change every a minute, for example. Uh, so that can be changed the timer. But if you will look on, if you have Google Authenticator application on your phone, you know that um, the numbers change every 30 seconds, I think it is, um, by default. So we're not going to go into any more detail there. We just want to set this up and get this working um, and integrate it within your package. And then you can spend some time, have a look at the documentation. It would take and give you more details here. Now, this is kind of abstracted from you. Uh, or from the user. The user doesn't get to see any of these details. So you can kind of set these up manually if you wanted to at a later point. So uh, saying that, let's um, now go ahead and utilize some of the other URLs 
so what we can now do let's have a look at some of the URLs that are available um, so without doing anything else we can just use some of these because all these URLs that have been created are attached to templates that have been pre-created by Django two-factor authentication package so um, let's go ahead and have a look at the account register uh, setup so let's go into the setup account two-factor setup that's what we're looking for so account two-factor setup that takes us to a page now that asks us to enable two-factor authentication so you can see the problem here is that we need to make this lined up to our existing project so we're going to need to go in and we we'll go through this process in a minute and I'll give you a few tips on how to kind of get this integrated within your project but let's just set this up so I'm logged in as a user let's press next and you can see that I've been generate I've generated a a QI code so I'm going to get my Google Authenticator app now on my phone I'm just going to scan this code and then that should then get be added to my um, Google Authenticator which it is so then I can go ahead now and add in this token so 064752 and then what's happening now is I'm going to authenticate this code with this number to my phone so essentially I'm just making this check to make sure that my phone and the numbers that they're supplying are in sync with what's happening in the server here so I press next and it says you've been authenticated so I'll go back to the security page this is now is like the home page for setting this up and you can see here you can now disable two-factor authentication so what's happening in the background in terms of authenticate disabling and enabling if I go into the admin area here and again go down to the top T devices you can see here that when I go into admin I've got confirmed so if I disable that then it's likely that then the TOTB device has been disabled so let's just do that let's um let's just uh, turn this off and press save okay so I'm just gonna log out I'll log back in again so you can see this time because I've disabled it it doesn't work or it doesn't um, I'm not asked for it so you can see that's what it means by enabling and disabling it's just going to remove that option there so I've enabled it back or I've enabled it again on my account so let's just try one more time to make sure it works and there we go so I'm being asked again for the token right so you can see how it's working um, within five minutes I've now created a uh, a two-factor authentication uh, application or I've integrated a two-factor authentication application within my Django application so if you are familiar with two-factor authentication you're probably also familiar with this idea of backup tokens so typically when you have a, a service providing two-factor authentication you can also generate some backup tokens so if you don't have a device with you you can access your account using the backup tokens so if you forget or if you lose a device you basically use these backup tokens to get in disable two-factor authentication so that you can then wait until you get another mobile phone or whatever and then re-enable it with the new code etc so that provides a way of users accessing their account if they lose um, or disable or uninstall sorry um, the Google Authenticator application so if you just go into show codes and generate token this is from the account two-factor uh, dashboard or home page for the account security so show codes generate token and there we go so these are some tokens that you can utilize so the idea is that you need to back those up on a wherever you back them up and then you can access your account if you lose or forget or uninstall the Google Authenticator application so you may be wondering why you I was looking at a different screen than you were when you went to the login page uh, when you installed this application so you would have been presented with this screen here so I just set it up earlier so you could kind of see the whole thing so now let's go into the templates and now start to integrate this package into our existing Django application so the message here is referring to the fact that what we can do here is we can go into the 
Django two-factor authentication package. Go into the two-factor folder here and we can then go into the templates two-factor. And what we can do is we can place this folder. We can build a new table, uh, build a new folder called two-factor and we can place all of these templates within that folder within our project. So here, for example, I'm going to put it into the account folder. I've made a, oh, I haven't made, sorry, excuse me. I'm not going to put it there, sorry. In templates, let's start again. So in your templates, it's looking for a folder called two-factor. And there we go. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to download all of those. So we just need to download, we just need to download this. Okay, and we're just going to basically put the the two factor uh, templates. We're going to put all these templates in our project right here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and extracted that folder that I downloaded, and then I've gone ahead and I've now added all of those templates inside of this two factor folder here. So when I go back now to my application and refresh, you can see that it's still saying two factor underscore base to style this page remove this message uh, so it doesn't seem to be working right this second so two factor is base okay let's uh just uh restart the project let's give that a go and let's go back and, and refresh and it seems like it's still actually showing that so um let's see if we can actually see if our um, two factor base is actually working so you can see that we've got this message here so let's go ahead and just remove this and this so we've got a little bit more room here to work with so you can see the message that's being displayed right here so let's just get rid of that message now let's save go back and refresh so clearly we are now utilizing those templates that we downloaded and we placed inside of our Django project so what I'm trying to do here is I only want this component here. I want to integrate this within my existing project. So you can see that um, this content wrapper block is is pretty much all that I'm, I'm going to want to potentially utilize in the base. So let's just get rid of everything else. Let's just bring it down to its uh, minimal components there. So refresh, you can see it's a uh, that's kind of the minimum components potentially that I'm going to utilize there. So let's bring the project back. OK, so in my project, it's going to be obviously be completely different potentially to yours. So you can download this code base and have a look at what I'm doing. So let me just take you through how I'm going to do this. So let's remember, or sorry, in my project, not let's remember, in my project, my templates in the account, I have a login.html. So that was my original login page. So you can see it right here. And you can see what I'm doing, I'm using, and I'm assuming you understand Django template system, I'm extending this file uh, from the sub base. So what I'm doing, if you're not familiar with Django templating, I'm extending. So I'm basically, I'm taking this file here and I'm injecting the code from my login page into here, say. So you can see all this code is going to be built up on the screen and then the code, all the code here in login is going to be placed right here in this section. And you can see in the sub base, I'm extending from the base. So I'm going out of this folder here and I'm going into this file here. And this is my setup file for the pages. You can see it's got the HTML uh, header, etc. on this page. So on this page here, that's like the header for the page, etc. that you saw earlier. Now down here on line 154, you can see this is in the base.html. That's where I'm going to put my block. That's where I'm going to put the code from the sub base. So the sub base code is going to go into this block. And then you can see I've got another block here and that code um, from the login is going to be placed right here. And that's how the page is being created through these kind of blocks, injecting this, in, um, this code into those blocks there. So we've got a three stage here. We've got the base with all the main elements of the page. We've then in, we then place the code in the sub base inside of a section here on this page. And then here, this sub code um, block that gets filled up with the login. So what I need to do here is somehow utilize that system um, so that I can basically include the base here uh, into the um, into the existing base. Uh, so th sorry, this base here is my existing 
template base and this is the new base from two factor so I need to inherit from here I need to put this code inside of this block here so let's just go into um, for example my sub base here and I can just basically just use this code here right so I'm going to say extend from base so let's go back into my uh, my two factor base here and I'm saying that I want to extend from the base so that's this base file here so I've gone out one folder I've gone out one directory folder here now I'm inside the base a so dot dot dash so now I can have a look to make sure so it's being placed in the right place so here it needs to go in block content so I need to match block content uh, with the outer elements inside the base here so here it says block content wrapper so we know that's wrong now let's call that black block content so the same name is this here so let's just give that a go and see what it looks like okay so we've got an error here block tag with name content appears more than once okay no problem because you can see here we've got this content in the middle so let's call this sub content now okay so the block in the middle of the base is now called sub content so let's go back into oh, our code here so you can now see I've got my template my original um, code top and bottom etc and you can see that I've got the login stuff in the middle so what obviously I need to do now is kind of align this up utilize my existing template structures to kind of line all this up and again this is going to be different on yours um, so this is sub content now let's remember that what's being placed in here is if we go into uh, the two-factor core remember this is the login page so um, what we need to do now you see you can see it says block content when well, actual fact we want to put this code inside of our base here in the block sub content now so I go back into login here I'm going to call this block sub underscore content now so let's uh, have a look at those changes well that completely ruins it um, because I what I need to do now is also extend from the right place so um, extend two factor slash base dot focus okay so I've just done it in the wrong one okay, okay so you can see that this is being extended from the focus so that was the base focus sorry so again um, what we're going to need to do here you can see this extends the base dot html page um, so it looks as though um, I'm going to need to extend <laughs> A few different times here this is going to potentially get a little bit confusing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, not use this base focus okay so I'm just gonna um, get rid of this base focus or I better keep it for now actually uh, so let's go into a login so we're not going to use base focus um, so what we're going to extend from is just base yep the underscore base so this one here and then I can now use sub content because sub content is in the base so let's go back and have a look there we go so we can now see it's kind of lined up nicely um, with my existing code it's in the right kind of frame set there so obviously now I want to place that in the middle so here what I'm doing really is I'm just going to look at my existing code in the account login and have a look to see what I've done here so you can see I've got this form here it doesn't look like there's any styling but I'm extending from the sub base so this login is extending from the sub base so I'm having a look at this code see what's going on here um, so you can see that what I'm going to do now is have a look at this um, base here see basically this base needs to look like this sub base I think that's the, the key here so I'm basically just going to copy and paste that in like that this is pasted in from the sub base that I've already made for my template system so let's have a look to see if that kind of works okay so not much change going on there so you saw originally that login stretched the whole page so it's probably the wrong page to utilize I'm going to go in my dashboard go to edit details and that's going to tell me that I need to create a new kind of div around everything here so this edit details um, extends the sub base over here so you can see that I've got this column six so what I'm going to do now is go into my uh, get rid of the login so I've got my base I'm going to go into my login.html page 
So just after the block content, I'm going to add this new div, column six. Obviously, yours is going to be completely different, but I'm just uh, giving you a general idea of what's going on here. Um, so we've got that in. So now it's six and center. It now is center and utilizing uh, six blocks like in the middle here. So I've just basically centered it. You can see that I'm how I'm controlling that. So the last component that you saw was these boxes and these labels were controlled in a different way. So what I've done there is I've created a custom template uh, facility, um, which will filter, sorry, that will enable me to kind of control this. So if you want to control this, there's a few ways of doing this. I'm just kind of making a quick um, hack here, really. In some respects, it is, um, but is a, is a valid way of doing things. Um, so uh, let's go into, let's just uh, close this up, close this up. So I've made a custom filter. Now, I did make a previous tutorial. The previous tutorial to this is the custom filter tutorial. So I won't go through it completely, but basically we're making a custom filter for our form here. So um, we're going to need to build a new folder here. So if we want to build a new template filter, new folder, we need to call that template tags. So that's a template tags, yep. Yeah. Um, oh, it already exists apparently. Count template tags, oh, we've already got it. So inside of template tags, I've already made, looks like the example, yep. So if you wanna follow this example, what's happening here is I'm basically going to select the input field, collect it as a string, the whole string, as it would appear in HTML. I'm then gonna to check to see if there's any classes. If there isn't any classes, I'm gonna to start to set up a list so that then I can take the class items, you know, the style, the CSS class items, and then I'm going to inject them into the string, the input string, and then just return it. That's what's happening. I've explained it in more detail in the previous tutorial. So now I've got that in place. Uh, I can now start to think about putting that in my code. So let's see where we can control these uh, these inputs here. So these inputs are generated from, if we go into the templates and then your two-factor here, you'll see that we've got wizard actions and widgets forms. So this is the forms that have been generated. So uh, what you'll find is uh, just focusing on the wizard form here. So where this wizard idea comes from, this is something... Uh, another plugin that this application is using. So let's just go into the the documentation. There we go. Uh, you, you'll see that the when we install this application, it's also installing the Django Django form tools. So this is going to provide us a way of making a wizard. So a step by step type of um, form guide so when we click on this button it goes to that step and it shows a different form and so on so it just allows us to build that type of setup and that's what's being generated here <coughs> so it's in that respect it's it's not difficult but it can be difficult to kind of control these boxes because it's utilizing that type of uh, that um, package so here we're just going to create a class override where we're going to inject some classes some um, bootstrap classes to style this so uh, going back in the code, this is where the form is. So what I can do here is I can break this apart because um, we know that the form inputs are going to be generated, are going to be here within form. So we can now control how that is now being placed on the page. So let's just um, build this up. So um, we're going to say, so we're going to create a, a for loop. So for, for a field, oh, for a field in the wizard dot form. So for every field defined in the wizard form, we're going to do something. So we're going to manually print out the the label. So we've got a label here. Um, that's going to have a class of form label. So we're using bootstrap, so form label. And then inside of here, uh, we're going to output the uh, the field label. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for the label. So that's our label. So by doing this, we're also formatting how this is being presented on the page because we've got the label above the input field 
in our case that's what we would like so now we can output the field so let me just show you this show you this first so let's just do that first let's uh well actually let's just end the four okay so let's go back in and refresh so you can see that we're looping we see lots of things here because we we included let me just uh get rid of this so we're going to get rid of this wizard form now so you can see that yeah it's a bit of a mess right um but it's starting to be formatted so now we're going to format these inputs so we're going to use our custom let's go back here we're going to use our custom template filter that we've created so this filter is uh called add classes so that's what we've called our filter so what we're going to need to do here is uh, add classes and then we just need to define what um we want to kind of inject in the classes so this is going to be some bootstrap classes so form control and margin bottom two and then maybe account form so these are just all classes that i've set up for this system and our bootstrap classes so now we've got that in we go back oh, i'll go back and a refresh oh you have wrong uh so let's have a look to see what the problem is uh we've got a invalid filter so that could just be because we need to reset the server um so let's go back in reset the server or i may have uh, made a mistake build so invalid filter okay 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 so let's go back and just rerun the server let's try this again okay so there seems to be a small problem uh, so what's happening here the problem here is i'm not actually loading the filters uh, so here my filters are called example here so what i need to do is um just load them in so i load the um them in. i need to reset the server for that that's what i've forgotten so now when i run it hopefully now and we still got a problem okay <laughs> um let's go back uh because i've put it in the wrong code i mean i'm just going quick i do apologize that's all uh okay and it doesn't help that i'm so zoomed in out right so now then let's give it a go there we go so you can now see that the input forms have been nicely styled and i can pretty much work with this so um yeah you can see that it's now because it's the same form set where we've styled you can see that everything is nicely styled how i want it so next up i want to set up the uh, security kind of home page so we know that potentially how to get to the page remember we can have a look to see all the different urls that are created so um, we know that the two-factor setup page here so if i were to navigate to this here that's going to take me to the setup page but uh, you can see that to get to the two-factor page that's the account two factor now how do we control this page here so this page here represents if I go back in to my code <clears throat> if we go into our templates and let's uh, get rid of the account so in our templates here we've got profile inside of profile uh, you're probably going to find that this is um, the home page so we can just check that let's just do something like this so you can see that we're working on this page here um, so at this point we're going to think about doing the same thing right so we knew that the login worked from the base html so it's likely that we're just going to run from the base html and then run from sub content from the base html so let's give that a go so template does not exist so that's normally a problem the fact that i've not linked properly to it so i'm inside a different folder here in the profile so i need to go out out of that folder back into the main directory so i can access the base so dot dot dash here and then you can see that that works nicely so i'm not going to do anything else special there it's nicely lined up here um, and i've now got a different page here so this is the backup tokens <clears throat> so it's just now a case of working through these other uh 
these other pages here so let's go into there base um, <clears throat> dot dot dash and then make sub content so it's just a case of uh, working out what page at that point you're working with so in this case we've got the backup tokens page here so I just need to go around and this is one way at least to do it just uh, connect everything up <clears throat> to the page that I want to use um, oh login I'm already logged in <clears throat> so let's go back to two factor okay so show codes so I've saved the page that was the um, the backup tokens page so once I've set it up you can see that I'm just need to go through the pages that I need to and I'm just going to then realign it into my into my website and of course then the last thing I probably need to do at this point is to make a link to it. So I know it's the account two factor here. Um, so let's just quickly build a link to it. Now, um, let's just go back into the code here. Now, back to security form button. Okay, so if we're not too sure what links or how we link things, um, you'll find in the code that things link back to the, the profile for example so um, it looks like to get to the two-factor profile I can see here that my URL is such so um, what I can do of course is I can just copy this and just think about where I want to put this so um, in my system here I'm going to go to the account and then the dashboard edit details so on this page here I'm just going to make a new section so um, in my form here I'm just looking for a button yeah okay we we'll use that button there um, so I just paste that there so I've got it so I've got a button here um, that's probably not what I'm going to need I'm just going to need a link let me just link this so I'm just going to put it here just to show you so let's go back um, so let's go back into my account here we're going to go into security and login now you can see here that i've got an error i do apologize um what's going on here let's get rid of this two factor so two factor url okay so here I've got my link now to two-factor, for example. I, obviously, I would put this in a button, uh, but I can see now I, I've linked into that new app, the, um, the new the new um, package, sorry, um, that we're utilizing. And that, that allows me just to hook in. So everything else is kind of set up for me. So I can disable, I can show my um, tokens now. And it's in a basic terms, it's nicely set up. It's a case of if you want to extend those templates a little bit further and the buttons and so on, of course, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so by all means, go and have a read. Now you know how to kind of implement it. It's worth reading through, testing it out in your system, um, going through all the different facilities. There's a number of other tools that this provides, uh, mobile kind of codes um, that you can hook into. And just have a look at the documentation it, it kind of takes you through that but just for setting up Django two-factor authentication having and allowing users to have some codes so in case they like I said in, uninstall the Google authentication app on their phone or lose it or something like that that kind of protects you against that everything else um, you'll probably need some sort of link so they can contact you so you can disable it or reset it um, in case um, the user completely forgets all their codes and um, and their app now you may want to kind of <clears throat> maybe automate that slightly in in your application because you don't want lots of people contacting you potentially um, if you're kind of a small business you want to maybe automate that so maybe you, you're going to create a, a custom kind of automation tool um, which allows the user 
Uh, similar to when I, sh I showed you um, in a previous tutorial how to use Django to reset a, a password. So it's going to be kind of a similar process. You want to um, utilize that type of facility and basically copy that facility into a um, authentication reset option. So you'll send them an email, um, the user an email, and then you'll be able to um, allow them to click on the link and then potentially they can then disable it. But of course, more thought is needed there because if it's just a case of an email and someone can reset it on an email, maybe that's not the safest way of working because the whole point is it's trying to protect your account. Um, potentially, if someone is able to hack your email, um, you don't want them to be able to quickly uh, kind of overcome the two factor in that respect. But anyway, those are just wonderful questions that you may need to think about now. Hopefully that was useful just to get two-factor authentication quickly working on your application. Of course, this integrates. So you saw it earlier, integrates with the admin as well. So the admin needs to actually have two, uh, if it's an admin user, of course, need to use now two-step authentication uh, to log in. Remember to make sure that um, before you log out, grab your um, your code because you won't be able to log in otherwise. Again, you'll need to go into the database and kind of turn that off to do that. And that can be a little bit of a process if you're not familiar with doing those type of things. So thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.